Hello, welcome to Impartial Theorists. We are here in Madison, Wisconsin, which may be underwater by the within end of the day. Hours. So, oh uh, yeah, within a couple hours. So, yeah. you may have heard in the news. I don't think they heard in the news. Nobody gives a fuck about if Madison is flooded. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, when I, uh, my hometown Rockford, just like an hour and 15, 20 minutes south of here, flooded. That got some national news, but actually it was mostly because like this guy was like driving a jet ski through a <laughs> grocery store parking lot that was flooded. Florida shit. Yeah, that, well, Rockford is kind of like a little yeah. micro cosm of Florida. Well, when, when that shit happens in Florida, nobody bats an eye. That's just normal. Yeah, yeah that's true. And so. Plus in Florida, floods, people just go home and bring out their fucking big ass trucks. Yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so Madison, apparently this is like a 500 year storm, or the, at least the water levels are at like a 100 year high point, um, and half of the, like the west side of town is all like flooded, flooded. streets are flooded. flooded, and that so basically the water just went down, like yesterday really still the day really before. Hasn't, though. And like the lake is full as fuck. Yeah, if it, <laughs> though, and the ground is even full, um... And so if it rains, there's really nowhere for the water to go. And yeah, apparently it's, it's been kind of sprinkling today where we're supposed to get, possibly get a, another heavy rainfall. So yeah. Today is exactly the same day that it was, like the same kind of day. It started out like this, kind of cold, and then it got really fucking crazy. Yeah, it was just dumping rain. I was out driving yeah. and yeah, it was just flash floods. I mean, you're just driving and then all of a sudden you're in like two feet of water. I was lucky enough to be able to back out and I was driving my car and like went into one of those deep water things. You just said, fuck that. Well, I started going, I'm like, well, no, no, I've got to reverse. Yeah. Like, this would be the dumb thing to do is to try to go through this. So, um, anyway, yeah, we might just be underwater. I'm thinking about actually going to, the, there's a part of Madison that is underwater. Actually, our dam is possibly failing. They're letting water go through it because in raising the level of Lake Monona, mm -hmm. Because the dam, they think if it gets, if it gets any more so full, no. the, the dam could just break. Oh, that's why the lake is so full. Yeah. Okay. And, well, no, now they're letting out more water into the other lake. So the the lake on the north side mm. is like, uh, I guess, like a few feet higher or something than the other shit. one. And they have that dam. And so if the shit gets too full on the north side, it's going to break the dam, I guess. And then the people this in the gonna known are really going to be screwed. Because it could go up. It could, like, flood a lot of houses. It's, it's, so. I feel like it is going to, because the fresh shit already breached everything, and it already has made shit so full, because that golf course is still fucking full, and yeah. that's that's what made shit spill over the last time, and sh sh yeah, that's it's gonna be bad. Yeah. So if you hasn't been on the news, you may, may gonna, be seeing it's gonna on the be news pretty soon. Out. So we might yeah. just get lucky and nothing happens, but also we could just be underwater. No, my basement is about to be fucked. Yeah, luckily my house is like kind of on a high mm. point, so I might be good. But I do have shit in the basement. I should probably at least like stack on a table or something, some speakers and whatnot. Mm. But anyway, so that's the local news and uh, you know our lives here. So. Um, I think we're gonna be alright though. Don't don't worry too much about us. <laughs> Nobody gives a shit. <laughs> um, but we got some stuff that probably you do care about. Maybe you don't. I hope you don't. But you probably know about it, at least. Yeah. Uh, Manafort and Cohen. We've been talking about this for a long time, and it's just like been leading up to this, and it finally happened. Manafort and Cohen indicted on multiple charges. Uh, mostly Manafort related to his time lobbying for foreign governments, lying to the IRS about his income, stashing money, foreign banks. He was living a life. But nothing related to uh, the Trump campaign. Yeah. But He met Trump and Trump blew up his whole fucking life. His life was so good. Like, I feel kind of feel bad for him. This is something that we've been saying, but I think the New York Times basically kind of summed it up pretty well here. Is that if it wasn't for their decision to attach themselves to the most unlikely president in modern history, there's every reason to think they might still be working their frauds today. Yeah. And nobody would have... Because 
who's gonna catch them? The, the US has diverted most of the FBI's like resources towards like terror shit. So yeah, towards, and that's what that like, that's yeah. what this article is pretty much about is just talking about how they really would have white collar crimes like this aren't ever really investigated. The FBI is, does not put a lot yeah, of resources. Nobody has into time. It. The FBI doesn't have the money. Like yeah, to chase one person, you have to do it in multiple countries too, because these are. It's like low key, not James Bond shit, but like it's. Well, even this scenario is a very unlikely. I mean, you had this situation. Like, I mean, and that again is what this article is talking about is how like kind of this came together to be like a really <laughs> deep investigation into white collar crimes. And yeah, the stuff Manafort was doing goes back like decades. Yeah. He's been at this for his entire no, Nobody whole really life. knows how much he's worth. Whatever yeah. they caught him with, that's that's his like in the that's that's his um the money he's willing to put in the banks and shit. He probably has a lot more hidden away. Oh, I'm sure. And yeah. uh his family will be good. And he's probably not gonna be in jail that long. Yeah, he'll probably just quietly get Yeah. Cohen, Cohen got a deal. The Cohen is only going to be three to five years. Wait a second, though. Yeah. Hey, Trump has talked about pardoning them before. Yeah, like, he's not going to pardon Cohen because now he calls Cohen a flipper. Like a oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he, he, oh, he, yeah. yeah, he basically turned on Cohen when he found out about the secret recordings yeah. that Cohen had made, which is seriously still such a mystery. Like, why the hell did he do that? So he could protect himself. Every. Like, if you're around Trump enough, you'd be like, nah, some shit is going to go down. Yeah. I need a safety net. I'm going to also figure that shit out. But even to be his lawyer and be it's put a, like, no, not, you got to have that. Like, that's, that's so That's kind of part up. of being, not part of being a lawyer, but if you're a dirtier lawyer. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's like a Saul Goodman, but like high... High ranking. Yeah. <laughs> like, if, Saul, if all Saul Goodman's clients were like super wealthy, well connected. Yeah. He's those those kind of people are more like like lawyers mixed with fucking like what's the name Co like concierges and shit. They're like your personal concierge lawyer, like an amalgamation of service industries. Yeah. Yeah. It's not just yeah. They'll go get you your latte. <laughs> nah. They'll, they'll they'll pay off your. Playboy stripper, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, that yeah. is more likely what it is, and actually what it is. That's <laughs> in this case. what it is. That's why he he gets paid more. He does the extra shit. That's how you appeal to rich people. You do extra shit for them. So he got Trump, and he was probably milking that shit. Cause for the 150 he paid um um Stormy, he got 400 and something back. Oh yeah. <laughs> I didn't hear that, so they actually have he a made, connection. Yeah. That's why he's willing to, to pay off with no money from Trump. So that was true. But he still got it back, like, threefold. threefold. Um, but yeah, then there's the other side of this is, does this really make a difference in the perception of Trump because according to Fox News no yeah there's an article here that this this is the title Trump won't lose supporters over Manafort Cohen despite what liberal media are spewing and it's by one of those blonde middle-aged Fox News woman mm. name is Liz Peek you don't need to remember that just picture that kind of person He's basically in the first sentence is the liberal media suggested suggests that that Trump is on a sinking ship and will soon be losing the support of a large number of his followers. <laughs> the group Hillary Clinton first sentence described as a basket full of deplorables. Don't believe it. So she already starts she's already started trying to throw in a little misdirection and shit. And she's probably right. She doesn't need to do all this fuck. He, he didn't need to mention Hillary, Hillary Clinton. Everybody already knows he's not gonna lose anybody over that shit mm -hmm. but anyway fox news basically saying that that the justice that they believe that the justice department is trying to prosecute him illegally so they trump has already covered his back with that shit yeah i just feel like it's getting in a harder and harder place to get to because like you have kind of the um 
the Tucker Carlson's, we'll which <laughs> I want to watch that shit again. I just want to play this one clip. I'm not gonna watch it. Yeah, close your eyes. And now he turns out to be an idiot. I, I, you know, that's bad judgment, I guess, putting him on the advisor list. But you can't convince me that's a real thing because it's not. Well, I'd be well, yeah, I just was going to play that clip. He's talking about George Papadopoulos and he's basically like dismissing it. But and saying that it was bad judgment to have him that high on an advisor list. But it's like, well, that's kind of the whole point. I mean, it was bad judgment to have Manafort leading your campaign. It was bad judgment yeah. to... They were connected by the Russia ship. They both had dealings in Russia. And Manafort was just... He, he knew more about that than Trump, and it's just a way to get... Oh, it made sense at the time yeah. for them in that situation, yeah. but yeah. if you look at it, it's bad judgment. Because yeah, they, they didn't think they were going to win, though. Yeah. They didn't think they were going to win. They thought at least this could be a money laundering opportunity. <laughs> and it has proven to be... That's what's so messed up about it. But yeah, no, I mean, I feel like so if you watch this whole clip, which we're not going to do, I don't want to put at you through that, but uh, you have just kind of this. I mean, yeah, the, the, is the right has been saying this is the yeah. witch, a witch hunt the whole time. But now it's like you have these indictments and like they're not they can't really defend that anymore. And then you have the like super fringe who like you have that kind of like, oh, Trump isn't that bad of a guy. But then you have this also like people that like Trump is perfect in every way. And that's like the QAnon people. And I don't know, I found this that apparently like on Reddit, a bunch of the because apparently Trump and Mueller were working together to stop the pedophile cabal led by the Democrats and like now this just throws everything into question but apparently all the reddit conversations about cohen and manafort were getting deleted on reddit and the well, like they are reddit one of the reddit. yeah not, um, not all of reddit well yeah the yeah on their reddit thread but the q anon thread or whatever it's fucking called the real donald trump or whatever the fuck it is but uh and yeah, apparently one of the leaders like said it's it's off topic or something. So I just feel like it's getting, but at the same time, Trump Trump is freaking out. Do you, do you want me to read some of the tweets that he tweeted this week? It started with sure. this really weird one. If anyone is looking for a good lawyer, I would strongly suggest that you don't retain the services of Michael Cohen! Exclamation point. That was the first a one. A little bit like, late for that, but that's just a. <laughs> just giving him a bad he's, he's bad to throw shade, but <laughs> it's just this bad shade. And then he moved on. It's to, just cheesy. I mean, yeah, he's mad because he thinks Cohen flipped, which he probably did, and he also recorded that shit. He thinks he flipped, and he he got three to five years because he flipped on Trump and Manafort. And he, after that, he tweeted, "I feel bit, very badly for Paul Manafort and his wonderful family." Justice, I don't know why he did that. Took a 12 year old case, among other things. Why does he say he, he calls the Justice Department justice in quotes? What the fuck is that? <laughs> they are the fucking Justice Department. You can't say the Justice Department and, and negate everything that they are. Anyway, he took a 12 year old case and applied pressure on him and flipped Michael Cohen. Such respect for this brave man. Some shit. That he went to a large number of counts. Ten could not even be decided in the Paul Manafort case. Witch hunt. And then he moved on to... I'm tired of reading this. Michael Cohen ple pled guilty to two counts of... Uh, I'm not going to read that shit. He was basically freaking out the whole fucking morning. After he heard that shit. Yeah. And then he's moved on to South Africa. South African farmers getting killed. Or some shit. I think that's the next story. A distraction, perhaps, or just his like shout out to yeah. the old white boys <laughs> that love him so much. Um, he knew they'd appreciate it because uh, the story is just not getting attention, and Tucker Carlson is the only one brave enough to cover it. Um, <laughs> crazy shit is going down here. Tucker yeah. is thinking about fucking <laughs> South Africa. And yeah, so Trump gave a shout out to. 
uh, the South Tucker African Carlson. farmers getting killed. Oh, Carlson. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. He <laughs> tweeted the that he's getting uh, Mike Pompeo, the Secretary of State, to, to check 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 into check on. What does he say? Check check into it or some shit. To like, like look deeply look, into, yeah, look it into it or something. It. Um, investigate deeply or something like that. Uh, let me just actually pull it up here. Oh, here it is. Um, I have asked Secretary of State Mike Pompeo to closely study the South African land and farm seizures and expropriations and large-scale killings, killing of farmers. Quote, South African government is now seizing land from white farmers, which apparently is quoting Tucker Carlson's Fox News show. But he adds Tucker Carlson in his tweet. So, direct response. <laughs> like he was probably watching the, show. the country responded to him. South Africa responded? Mm -hmm. Actually, I mean, I don't, I don't really know the whole much South African history, but I mean, I know that apartheid ended in 1994, and at that time, uh, about 10% are about in at South Africa about 10% of the population is white and they and own 95% of the land yeah and still to this day they own about 75% of the land which which was a issue back then after the end of the apartheid they wanted to redistribute the land and basically try and level the, the wealth gap and it took so long because people were suing and then the couldn't figure out whether to just take the land and pay later or like negotiate and they've been negotiating for a while and they recently tried to change the constitution to allow them to just take the land and then figure out what to pay after so you don't have a choice basically but people have been saying they, they've already been doing that even before they, they put that into effect in the constitution and they say that people who have been killing the white farmers too, basically trying to drive white people out of South Africa. And Trump echoed that sentiment. It's mostly by right wing, like white nationalists and shit. But yeah. Yeah. And I mean, so there is probably some race element to it. And so the article I found here on the New York Times and also another one by Vox kind of goes through the history of it. And like, there were, uh, was it? Basically, the murder rate has been coming down over the years. There was a peak uh, a few years, at, uh, or in the years following apartheid, but um, there's also no like tracking of race in homicides or if it was like a farm that was. So, but basically, if you look at the data, the national murder rate was. 34.1 per 100,000 people um, but the number of people living on farms is not fully known which makes it difficult to compare but basically there's no evidence that says uh, you're a person living on a farm is more likely to be murdered than just anyone else living in South Africa so uh, but it's also there have been cases that do seem were racially motivated killings of farmers that have happened over years. So you yeah. can just imagine, you know, white nationalists or like neo-Nazi people are obviously gonna like latch onto that because anything. <laughs> Yo, South Africa could have gone the Zimbabwe route and just kicked all white people out. Cause Zimbabwe did that. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I think this article or the other one we have linked uh, talks about that in but then it talks about how that caused like a lot of economic harm. Yeah. yeah. So, but but they were prosperous for a while. It's just people didn't know, didn't appreciate the land because now they just got in so much, and they didn't have enough people to man all those big ass fucking who were trained to man all the, the machinery and the big ass fucking farmland. Yeah. Well, in the article I read, it said something too that like invest a lot of investors pulled out during the switch of land yeah, yeah. which that just seems kind of bogus like just you know, be it, it makes sense because 
they don't know what's happening. They don't know if they can lose your shit. So they just liquidate and bounce. Yeah, but that, that's what's going to cause the fucking crash. Like, that's the problem. Yeah. yeah, sure, maybe it makes sense from that perspective. But then also, if everybody does that, then it obviously it's yeah, going to be set up to fail. Also, also so this like, is in the 90s anymore. South Africa has gained a bit more, like, res- respect. And people kind of see how the climate is. People understand the country a lot more. So I don't think people think shit is going to hit the fan and bounce. Also, there's a lot more black people than white people. So, and black people might still buy shit from the white people's stores. Is, yeah. if, if, I'm saying even if they did kill all the white people, God forbid, I don't, still don't think investors will pull out. Well, no, but I mean, what if they just took all, like, the land? Then Th- That's not what they're trying to do, though. They're trying to, to make it e- not equal, but, like, representative of South Africa. You're not trying to take away... No, what I'm just saying, if you're using the extreme that all white people were killed, I mean, I don't even think that is the reality of yeah, that's, the extreme. That's not, like, I'm saying if the extreme were just take, all of the land were seized, like, do you think that would affect the economy? Yeah, but that's why they're not doing that. Yeah. But... I mean... Why should it? I don't know. I, I think it's weird, like... I don't know. To me, it's like the investors are the ones kind of causing the problem. It's like the same thing with the stock market. It's just... If people people start selling because other people are selling when there's not actually a reason to, like, sure, if a bunch of people started farming that didn't know how to use the equipment or whatever, didn't know how to farm, you just had, you just then then I could see a reason for pulling out. But like, if you're pulling out just because the ownership is changing and there's no like reason to believe that it couldn't be as successful, then like the investors are the uh, ones causing also the problem. Also, the investors, so most of them will be white, and if they see. If, if they if they see the the um, seizing of land and it's paired with the reports of killing of white farmers, that's also another thing. That's yeah. a race war, and that's you got to bounce. Regardless if you support black people or not, you got to leave. Fuck that. That's yeah, I mean, I guess the thing is too is like the reason this is about race in 2018 is because it was about race like when fucking it's always white people a, yeah, came to fucking South Africa it's always, so it's, it's, like, always, it's always gonna be about race that's yeah. Not, yeah so it's not really like the South African black people are making it about it's race it's just been just like, about it's been it's, it's, about that's race that's the so. whole thing the white the fucking people saw that apartheid made it about race so, yeah exactly and that was the Dutch and, people and it still hasn't been sorted out 17 yeah. whatever 20 years later yeah that shit is hard to figure out <sighs> yeah I mean I don't know I feel like it's a lot of what we deal with in America too it's like we had this fucked up racist history and so now I we're all just kind of like they, they, I think this shit was maybe 70 years yeah it wasn't that long cause they came here to learn about that shit they went everywhere. They sent around a committee to perfect racism. I think we can end the show. All right. Well, yeah. Join us next week. Peace.